And finally, let's look at some of the regions of the Naswa or North Africa, Southwest Asian realm. The, in particular, the, we have Egypt in the lower Nile basin, kind of right in the middle. We have the Arabian Peninsula, mostly Saudi Arabia and, others, and a few other countries. We have the one called, one called the Middle East, which includes Iraq, Israel, Lebanon, and some others, and the empire states, including, and why they're called that is that both of these, both Turkey and Iran were formerly part of larger empires. And then the rest of the Sahara, including an area called the Maghreb that we'll take a look at. And just a few notes on these in, on, with Egypt and the Nile River Valley. Um, this is right in the central part of the realm, including Egypt and Sudan. Sudan used to be a larger country. It included what is now South Sudan, but a bloody civil war in the 2011, and uh, result before that, but in 2011, they split into two separate countries, Sudan and South Sudan. And so South Sudan is really more part of Sub-Saharan Africa. So it will be included in a, in a different chapter. In the Middle East, one thing we mentioned when we talked about oil resources is that Jordan is kind of left out of it. It's not in the Persian Gulf or in other areas of the oil field. So it really has little or no oil production. And because of that, its economy is highly dependent on US aid. So Jordan has strong ties, really strong ties with the United States. It's also a very stable country relative to other places like Syria and Iraq. Um, one we haven't mentioned before is Lebanon. This is Lebanon between Syria and Israel. And it has a good location, has a good climate for, for agricultural activity. It has a lot going for it geographically, but one difficulty it has is that difficulty with its neighbors, that there's um, between Syria and being between Israel, that there's a lot of interference from its neighbors, such as you know, militias from other countries being getting coming in, getting involved in, in Lebanon. Moving on to the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, the big country here is Saudi Arabia. And while Saudi Arabia isn't the most populated amongst the countries, it's one of the most powerful. And a lot of that has to do with oil wealth. And so um, Saudi Arabia and Iran are two very powerful countries that are often at odds with each other. And Saudi Arabia is kind of home to, to Mecca, home of the uh, the, the origins of the Islamic religion were, and, and Iran is an Islamic Republic and it's, it had an early revolution that kind of kicked out uh, other leader. And so anyway, the, the two are rivals as far as being the, the top Islamic power. Uh, Saudi Arabia has the largest oil reserves in this part of the world, especially here in the Persian Gulf. And in addition to Saudi Arabia, there are some other Gulf states. It's a little hard. I'm gonna kind of use a different map to show this. We have Kuwait, Bahrain, small little place, Qatar, and United Arab Emirates. And these are the known as the Gulf states. And they are quite wealthy and very integrated with the global economy. Going back to our other figure, at the other extreme, on the opposite side of the Persian Gulf, we have the state of Yemen. Yemen is kind of the, on the other end of the spectrum. It is um, very poor and has a lot of conflicts. And a lot of those conflicts line up between um, people who are Sunni and Shiite. Up in the empire states, we have Turkey, which at one time was part of the larger Ottoman Empire. Now, one of some of the things that make Turkey stand out compared to its neighbors is the idea of the Turkish model. And this is the idea that rather than being a purely Islamic state, that it was a secular state with a multi-party democracy. Now, it has over time kind of slid away from that, but that historically has been true. 
It also has, it has a largest city in the realm, Istanbul, which is kind of right between Europe and Asia. And because it sits so close to Europe, that it's much more integrated with Europe than many other countries of the realm. And in fact, there was an effort for Turkey to join the European Union at one time. It's not going too well now because of the because under um, Erdogan, the, the current leader, that it is it is kind of reduced it, the amount of democracy in the country. And it's also a member of NATO. Remember, NATO is a military alliance between Western Europe and the United States, but also includes Turkey as well. The Empire States also include Iran, which was at one time the center of what was called the Persian Empire. So the Persian Empire was a much larger empire that centered on Iran. It is a Shiite country it, the, and a strong majority Shiite. And as such, so we talked about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is primarily a Sunni country, right? Iran is a Shiite country and Iran and Saudi Arabia are often rivals in this part of the world. They don't fight each other directly, but what they do is they support militias both Shiite and Sunni militias in, in other countries, such as in Yemen. One thing to note about Iran is, Iran is a very modern country with a large urban population. About 71% of people live in cities. And it is not it is quite a modern country. If you went to visit some of the cities there, you know, the, I think people sometimes have the conception that it may be a kind of country or backward place, but that's the opposite is actually true. And finally, in Northwest Africa, near the Sahara, this is an area called the, the Maghreb. Um, the Atlas Mountains provide something like a reverse rain shadow, as we've mentioned before. And that provides a, a wetter climate right along this, what is almost an island of, in North Africa called the Maghreb. And lastly, as we go further south, you get into the African transition zone. So there's some of these countries we haven't really discussed. We'll probably include them a bit more in the next chapter. But there is a transition as you go further south in the Sahara to get getting to sub-Saharan Africa. And what this is showing is the percentage of people who are Muslim by country. And it, it's really high in North Africa, but along this transition zone is where that starts to change. And you start to have lower percentages as you get into sub-Saharan Africa in places like Nigeria. And you also have places like Nigeria that are split from a, a north to south with different cultures and different religions. And this is an area called the Horn of Africa. And we'll cover it a bit more in the next chapter, but it includes Ethiopia, Somalia, and Etruria here in the corner. <clears throat>